Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Range Gate Pull-Off and Velocity Gate Pull-Off. This presentation provides a short technical introduction to these two types of deceptive jamming, and how they're used in electronic warfare scenarios. Let's start by talking about radar. Radar is one of the most important components of EW or electronic warfare, and there are many techniques that can be used to minimize the effectiveness of an adversary's radar. The most basic jamming methods simply involve generating noise, that overwhelms the radar receiver and keeps it from being able to detect radar returns or echoes. More sophisticated methods involve tricking a radar into calculating an incorrect target location and or velocity. This type of deceptive jamming is primarily used for self-protection. That is, the target is also the jammer. The goal of deceptive jamming is to force the radar to lose lock on the target and then have to restart the search and acquisition process. Two common deceptive jamming methods are range gate pull-off and velocity gate pull-off. Let's start with range gate pull-off. When a radar acquires or locks onto a target, it places so-called range gates on each side of it. These gates create a short range interval within which the target is expected to be located, and this gate will move with a target. Radar returns or echoes are only received and processed within this gate, and signals outside of these gates are blanked or ignored. Using range gates provides protection against some types of jamming, and can also improve the signal-to-noise ratio of the received returns. Range gate pull-off breaks the radar lock by creating false returns that pull the range gate off the target. There are three steps in range gate pull-off, capturing the range gate, delaying the returns, and breaking lock. This process is usually repeated multiple times. Let's go through each of these steps, starting with capturing the range gate. Pulsed radar systems work by sending out pulses of energy and then detecting when that energy is returned after encountering an object. The first step in range gate pull-off involves sending false returns with the minimum possible delay. This means that the false returns are essentially superimposed on the real returns. Note that the false returns, here shown in red, have a much larger amplitude than the real returns. At this point, the target is actually making itself more noticeable to the radar. In response, the radar's automatic gain control will reduce its sensitivity to prevent distortion or overload, but note that this decreased sensitivity also prevents the radar from being able to track the real, lower amplitude returns. The range gate is now being defined by the false returns generated by the target, and this is sometimes referred to as capturing the range gate. The next step is delaying the returns. For a given range, all of the real returns will be equally spaced apart, but the false returns generated by the target are progressively delayed. Remember that the purpose of generating high amplitude false returns is to decrease the sensitivity of the victim radar, and this helps prevent the radar from detecting the real or skin returns coming from the target. Because the radar is now only tracking the increasingly delayed false returns, the target will appear to be moving away. This is done until the false target moves outside of the real target's range gate. The final step is breaking lock. After the false target has been moved far enough away from the real target, that is, outside of the real target's range gate, the false returns are turned off. This causes the radar to lose tracking or break lock. The radar must then restart the search and acquisition process, usually by increasing gain or sensitivity and this process takes some amount of time. The target can, however, restart or repeat the range gate pull-off process as many times as necessary. Range gate pull-off normally creates false targets that are farther away than the real target. This is because the deceptive returns are delayed and arrive after the real returns. Range gate pull-off can work on radars with either a fixed or a variable pulse repetition interval. In the case of a fixed PRI, the deceptive returns could be sent such that they arrive before the real returns. This would cause the target to appear to be moving towards the radar, and thus is called range gate pull-in. Before we start discussing velocity gate pull-off, let's spend a few moments reviewing Doppler radar. The Doppler effect causes radar returns to be shifted in frequency due to relative target movement, and this frequency shift can be used to determine the target's velocity. There are two main categories of Doppler radar. The first of these is pulse Doppler, which is often used to detect low-altitude targets, 
since stationary ground clutter and moving airborne objects have different velocities. The second type is CW, or continuous wave radars. These are often used for missile guidance, since CW provides superior speed and accuracy, and it can also more easily distinguish between aircraft and chaff decoys. Both types of Doppler radar create velocity gates in a way that's similar to range gates. Targets are expected to have a velocity that falls somewhere within this gate, and once the target is acquired, signals with a velocity outside of this gate are ignored or filtered out. Velocity gate pull-off jamming, therefore, starts with sending a high power signal with the same frequency as the Doppler shifted real returns. This higher amplitude signal captures the velocity gate in the same way that range gate pull-off captures the range gate. The frequency of the fake returns is slowly shifted to simulate changes in target velocity and move the velocity gate away from the real target. Note that unlike range gate pull-off, it's very easy for velocity gate pull-off to pull the gate in either direction. Once the velocity gate is far enough from the real target's gate, the jammer is turned off. This causes target lock to be lost, and the radar must restart the acquisition process. It's worth noting that for some types of Doppler-based radars, such as missile trackers, reacquisition during flight may be difficult or impossible. Let's walk through this again graphically. Here, a CW signal is sent at a given frequency, and the missile seeker receives a slightly Doppler-shifted lower amplitude skin return from the target. Based on this Doppler shift, the missile calculates the target velocity and places a velocity gate around it. The target's jammer starts by returning a higher amplitude signal with the same frequency as the real return in order to capture the velocity gate. In this example, the jammer then decreases its frequency, which makes the target appear to be moving away more quickly, and the velocity gate is adjusted to this new target velocity. The process is repeated with an even lower jamming frequency, and the velocity gate is again adjusted upwards. When the velocity gate has been moved far enough away from the actual target return, it's switched off, causing the missile to lose lock on the actual target. Testing range gate pull-off or velocity gate pull-off requires simultaneous generation and or analysis of both real and deceptive returns. On the generation side, Vector signal generators are used to create and combine these two signals. This is typically done to test the radar receiver's ability to differentiate between the real and the deceptive signals. On the other side, analysis is used to verify proper jammer function. For example, does the jammer produce correct and believable deceptive returns? Two different categories of test and measurement instruments can be used for analysis. Signal or spectrum analyzers are often used because of their ability to perform a wide range of different types of analysis, such as pulse or transient analysis, real-time analysis, etc. In some cases, high bandwidth oscilloscopes can also be used for some types of range gate and velocity gate pull-off testing. Let's end with a brief summary. Range gate pull-off and velocity gate pull-off are so-called deceptive radar jamming techniques. In both cases, false returns are transmitted by the target and are used to move the radar's range or velocity gate off the real target. Once the gate has been moved far enough away, these deceptive returns are stopped and target lock is lost. Testing range gate pull-off and velocity gate pull-off requires the simultaneous generation and or analysis of both the real and deceptive signals. For testing receivers, a vector signal generator is used to create both signals. Signal analyzers are the most common tool used when analyzing and evaluating jammer function and performance although oscilloscopes can also be used in some cases as well. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Range Gate Pull-Off and Velocity Gate Pull-Off. If you'd like to learn more about radar testing or about generating and analyzing radar signals, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.